<clears throat> All right, um, I just got finished listening to the trilogy of Chrissy's response about uh, the educated lame, and she was rebutting some points from um, some counter arguments that were made by the educated lame segment of YouTube and whatnot. And I just want to throw, you know, my hat in the ring and put my dog in the fight. Just a quick caveat, well, it might not be quick, I don't know, but a caveat um, to establish, you know, my credibility on this particular subject about what I'm about to dive into, which is um, the black female matriarchal structure within the black community and how that particular uh, subculture is proliferated throughout the black community and how it adversely affects the black community as a whole. Uh, my mother is the third child of 15. My grandmother had nine daughters and uh, six, six uh, sons. And I would say none of my aunties are married to the original men in which they had children with. Uh, and the first men that they settled down with, they're not married to them. It's like two aunties of mine who are married, but they remarried to different men. Everyone else, including my older first cousin females, are unmarried single mothers. And there is a culture that comes with that, that, that continues that, that vicious cycle. And I, I think that you failed to address that in and of itself because there's a lot of underhanded, under the shadow type of behavior that black women engage in, which further exacerbates the problems within our community. And that being, I like to call it the quote unquote sisterhood code. It's a, it's a unwritten, it's an unwritten code. It's, it's rarely spoken about in the presence of men. But if men, if you are vigilant and you watch this code, if you watch the actions of these women, they all operate under this code. This is this is type of stuff that, you know, during girls night, when, you know, everybody gets together at one of their girlfriend's houses and they bring a couple boxes of wine and some chocolate and whatnot. And they watch old, you know, how... Um, what love got to do with it in the old 90s movies and of the such. This is the type of stuff that they talk about. Uh, it is about, on the women's aspect, it is about maintaining power and control over, over the influence within the community, even at the detriment of the community as a whole. That is a problem. And this whole mindset is enforced by the state. You're asking black men to assert themselves as patriarchs within the community, but the very thing that they have to go up against is backed by the state. You cannot beat the state. Chrissy made reference, references um, during her trilogy to why, you know, black women essentially had no choice but to turn to the welfare system and whatnot and saying that, well, any other woman would have done the same thing. Okay, well, if that is the case, it's 2017 and knowing that, you know, the welfare system and the intrusion of the state in the nuclear family is a problem within the black community, it needs to be that problem needs to be addressed and and met aggressively by all segments of society, including you women, which means that a lot of you women are going to have to break the sisterhood code. A lot of you women who are relatives, friends, family members, and, and associates and whatnot to other women who are active participants in the baby mama industrial complex. You guys are the front line to this as it, as it pertains to setting the social tone on your side of the gender. 
you're going to have to um, use a various social tools, maybe shame, but you're, you're definitely going to have to talk these women off the edge and, and, and make it a social norm that this type of behavior and mindset is completely unacceptable and counterintuitive to the collective. I mean, you inadvertently uh, acknowledge that the welfare state that black people are under currently and the meddling of the state system in the nuclear back black family is the prob is one of the core problems in the black community. You inadvertently acknowledge that. Well, if we're gonna have to address, you know, the economic problems and the problems with protection and whatnot, you guys are gonna have to address certain aspects as it pertains to that with your gender. Which means a lot of women who participate in this type of philosophy and behavior are going to need to be ostracized, shamed, exiled, and a, a, a lot of things are going to have to, a lot of social, you know, sanctions are going to have to be put in place against these women to deter this particular behavior. Because I was, I was talking to a younger brother earlier this morning, and, um, I told him how a lot of black women, or a lot of black people in, uh, all together, they like to just stop and set up camp where they are. You know, I used the analogy, you know, I told him, you know, I want steak and lobster, but she would rather settle for fried chicken and mashed potatoes. Fried chicken, there's nothing wrong with fried chicken and mashed potatoes, but it's not steak and lobster. Yet and still, it's better than ramen noodles and hot dogs. You know what I mean? But a lot of black people in all together, both men and women, but you know, I'm I'm addressing this issue on my gender side with men, and I'm saying, yo, fried chicken and mashed potatoes is not good enough. You need to push yourself to the level to where you're getting steak and lobster. But I use another analogy about a journey. Let's say I'm on a journey with a black woman, right? And it's a journey of 200 miles. We get to the 100 mile mark, the halfway mark, and she says, you know what? I'm fine right here. I don't want to go any further. I want to set up shop right here. And I say, no, no, just listen, listen. We made it this far. Let's keep going. It's only 100 yards away. Come on, let's go. No, I'm not going. I'm about to pitch my tent and set up camp right here. What do you expect me to do? You expect me to drag her by the feet, kicking and screaming the, the, the rest of the way? until we get to that 200 yard mark. While with the backdrop of the welfare state and the state assistance programs looming in the background, she has a way out. If she doesn't have a way out and she has no choice but to go that full 200 mile journey with me, She's going to go that 200 mile journey, but if she has a way out, she's going to take that way out. And, you know, I want to tell you that women, y'all on y'all side, you, you all side, y'all need to deter taking the easy way out. You need to encourage the full 200 mile journey and not just setting up shop at 80 miles, 90 miles and 100 miles and just sitting there and just setting up camp right there. Because what you have as far as the gender dynamics in the United States are concerned, you have a um, demographic of people, women in general, who have complete who have the complete support 
of the state behind them to enforce their decisions. So if I say no, a hundred miles, that is not good enough. We need to complete this journey and make, make it 200 miles. And then she blows a whistle and all of a sudden, you know, the state goons pop up and prevent me from dragging her to complete 200 miles. What, what then can I do? You expect me to fight the state and fight this woman who doesn't want to do what she is not going to do what she doesn't want to do? Come on, man. And the truth is that a lot of these matriarchal ideals are instilled in these young girls all throughout the country. I remember um, I got a younger cousin. This is my first cousin. And uh, she just started going to college. She just graduated high school and she was going to college. And we had a family function and whatnot. And I'm asking her about her first year at college. And I'm asking her, is she dating any any guys down there and whatnot? And she was like, no, I'm focused on my studies. I'm focused on my studies. And I was telling her, well, you just make sure that you get a man who's in math, science, and technology and whatnot. You just make sure that, you know, you, you get a man who is going for a degree that can net you some money. You get a man in math, science, technology, engineering, and whatnot. My auntie overheard me saying this to my cousin. And she said, yeah, girl, but, you know, you might not want to get a man who majors in math because, you know, you want to be able to count the money. And see, that was a might, and she, and I've watched, I've sat back and watched her at many family gatherings coach, you know, my younger female cousins up into the same type of mindset, and nobody's checking her. Nobody's checking her. If I was to jump out the window and call her out on that shit on the spot and check her, it would be a cohort of, of my female relatives and male relatives that will ascend on me like the Persians did the 300 and chances are the shit might escalate and it might you know result in violence god forbid but that is that that is what I'm up against she's actively teaching young girls to be diametrically opposed to the the same societal structure that we need to get out of the situation and the predicament that we're in. She's actively teaching, coaching, and reinforcing matriarchy when we clearly need a patriarchy to get out of this shit. Now, how do I combat that? Even though my young female cousin has, and this ain't this particular auntie of mine, is, is a divorcee. She's got two sons, divorced, barely scraping by. You know what I'm saying? And, and this is synonymous throughout my family with the females in, in my family. If, if certain females in my family didn't, weren't, weren't fortunate enough or had, you know, the aptitude or fortitude to complete college and you know, get into a career that's a lot better than what they are in right now. A lot of them are working at Walmart, working at McDonald's, working in some factory, barely making ends meet. And the same, same philosophy that put them in that predicament, they are proselytizing religiously. These are matriarchal zealots. What are you going to do about the matriarchal zealots that are on your side? Because it takes two to tango now. It takes two to tango. And you want to talk about the white people and how they established the patriarchy and this, that, and the third. Back at the conception of their patriarchy in this region and in this country, the laws were very loose. 
So they were able to govern their households more strictly and more efficiently. And then by the time the laws changed in the fa and, and the state got stronger and the state was in a position to meddle in the nuclear family affairs, they had an example to point to to deter women from their community from uh, engaging in certain behaviors. They say, oh, all right, that's fine. You, you want to act, you want to be strong and independent? You want to be a single mother? Take a look, just, just 17 miles away at your nearest ghetto. Take a look down there. Just take a look. That's where you're going to end up. Is that where you want to end up? You know what I mean? So they don't even have to use a heavy hand to enforce their patriarchy. All they have to do is point to the dysfunctional matriarchy that is the black community and say, well, if you don't get with our shit, we're going to end up like that. You know what I'm saying? Come on. And at this given point in society, one cannot ignore the power dynamic between the establishment and the various demographics of this country. You cannot ignore that. You can't just say, well, y'all niggas should just do it anyway. Y'all niggas need to just go out there and, and 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 slay this Tyrannosaurus Rex, even though all you got is some some rocks to throw at them and some makeshift spears out of long sticks. Are you serious? All I got is a handful of rocks to throw at this Tyrannosaurus prehistoric killing machine, and you want me to fight that with 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 that come on that's like that's like that's like back in the stone ages and whatnot back in i don't know the crustacean era or jurassic era or whatever let's say humans were around then and you know we 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 lived in caves to seek shelter from these you know gigantic predatorial reptiles and whatnot and the woman says well i'm gonna go outside of the cave and you know, frolic around and, and whatnot. And it's your responsibility that if a Tyrannosaurus Rex comes up or a pack of Velociraptors show up to rip me to asunder and, and devour me, it's your responsibility to fight them and defeat them. And I'm like, are you serious? I'm 5'11", 6 feet, and you want me to fight a a, a 15, 20 foot tall killing machine with razor sharp teeth. <laughs> no, what you need to do, you need to stay your ass in this cave and finish sauteing this um what's a what's a mammal from that age? This this woolly mammoth thigh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You don't need to be you don't need to have your ass out there. And then when she goes out there and gets mauled by a pack of velociraptors, all oh, niggas ain't shit. Y'all, you need to assert yourself. And another thing, talking about, you know, Lakeisha with the fat ass and whatnot. Um, there, there is a lot of biological things, you know, variants that that play that come into play about that. And I was talking to this gentleman earlier today, earlier this morning, and I was explaining to him about hypergamy and how, you know, women are most attracted to wealth and resources and men are most attracted to youth and beauty. And there are some biological factors that come into play with that. And those are deeply ingrained within the subconscious and you know, DNA of humans that dates back thousands and thousands of years ago. These particular subconscious factors that attracts certain mates ha has been one of the main reasons why we were able to survive on this planet as long as we were. And I was telling this gentleman, I, I was explaining to him why women are attracted to wealth and resources. And I said, well, back in the days when we were hunters and gatherers, if you were a woman, it would be uh, advantageous for you to get with the best hunter in the village because you knew that 
when the herds around y'all got lean, you're in le you're in bed with the best hunter. If anything, he going to bring home the meat. And I was explaining to him why men are attracted to youth and beauty. When a man sees a beautiful woman in his subconscious mind, he equates good genes. When a man sees a young, a young woman, subconsciously, he does the math and he says, well, her reproductive window, she has a, she has a bigger reproductive window. So she is more fertile and the window to reproduce with her is wider. So my chances to ascertain, not ascertain, to get a, a seed from her, get a child from her is greater. And so when you see men today wanting beautiful women, you know, wide hips um, subconsciously tell us that, you know, your your hips are are more efficient to give birth. A beautiful face and, and beautiful this and that equates to good genes. That's something that it, 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 on the surface, it may seem vain. But at the end of the day, it, it's for the betterment of our society going uh, uh, as our species going forward. And I was saying and I was explaining to him about, you know, well, we're not hunters and gatherers anymore. We're capitalists. So when you see women wanting to be gold, uh, being gold diggers and whatnot, and wanting the man with the most resources and wealth, she's just doing what's just encoded within her DNA, what's just in, deeply embedded in her subconscious. She's doing what she's supposed to do. And when men want the want the best looking female, he's doing what he's supposed to do. But the problem does not arise with women wanting the men with the most resources and men wanting the most beautiful, youthful women. The problem arises with the philosophy behind the mating practices of a particular community. That's where the problem arises. When you teach a philosophy that is diametrically opposed to thousands of years of evolution, that being hypergamy, I see you got you got black women today trying to lower the beauty bar while simultaneously raising the wealth and resource bar, and they're just they're just going against thousands of years of evolution and the results from it is what we see today. And no, I've, I've yet to hear any black woman call this out. If you want us as black men to get on our game, get on our A game and call out men who refuse to get on their A game and you know, rally the troops for black men to get on their provider, protect and providing tip. What we need from y'all is y'all need to extinguish this toxic philosophy that is permeating throughout the black community. Y'all need to get on this. Y'all need to um, get on the heads of a lot of these women who, who champion this shit. If y'all as black women, women want us as men to light a fire under our fellow man to get off his ass and build, then y'all need to deter the very degenerate behavior that is running rampant amongst our women in our community. If you're not addressing that, then at the end of the day, regardless if, if the men are addressing it, it's not going to get done. If we don't address our problems on our end, shit's not going to get done. If y'all don't address the problems on y'all, on, on y'all's end, it's not going to get done. There were some more points that she made that I wanted to address. I just can't think of them right now.
oh yeah, she's talking about, you know, a lot of y'all are mad because you couldn't get the pussy. Now, I myself, I wouldn't necessarily classify myself as an educated lame. I'm a, I, I guess, a, a educated lame and trainer or whatever, because I'm still in school earning my credentials and whatnot. But I'm far from lame. Trust me. You know, I don't mean to toot my own horn, but I'm uh, very aesthetically pleasing to the eyes. And uh, my oratorical skills are on par to where I can talk to any race of woman about anything. I've had like seven women, seven black women, since the time I was 19, all the way into my late 20s, early 30s and whatnot, all the way up until now, just come right out and ask me to father their child. And when I went into detail with these women about the details about this, a lot of these women, they didn't want a relationship with me. They just seen my, my features and they figured that I'd make a cute baby. So they weren't they themselves interested in a nuclear family infrastructure. They, they themselves wanted to exploit the, uh, and be active participants within the baby mama industrial complex. And they figured, Hey, if I can get the cutest baby, that's a win win. I, I get, you know, I get to control the nuclear family situation unchallenged because I got this, 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 uh, state as my sword. And uh, I get a cute baby. Come on. So I'm gonna get I'm gonna get praise and get exoneration for being a mother now. And on top of that, I'm gonna get further praise because I made a cute baby. Cause I got. Come on. So when you talking to me, you're not talking to a brother who was mad because he didn't get the pussy. Hell. I tell I tell motherfuckers a lot of times I didn't turn down more pussy than you didn't got. You know, so getting a pussy ain't the problem. Getting a woman that's not gonna fucking fuck you over and and sabotage you every step of the way, and who's gonna be cooperative, that is the problem. Finding a woman who isn't going to poison the mind of your child with a whole bunch of failed philosophies. That's the problem. And a lot of and a lot of black women and black men do not want to face this issue because if they face this issue, they have to face their own mother. They do not want to admit that the way the philosophies that they were force fed growing up as a kid was shit and that they mama was wrong. You say, hey, look, you know, I understand that, you know, we survived X amount of years under this particular mindset, but this particular mindset is bullshit. And when you point that out, oh, nigga, you trying to say that my mama was on some bullshit? I mean, if you want to draw it all the way out and, and come to a conclusion, yeah, your mama was on some bullshit. You know what I'm saying? And I've and I've take and I've taken an objective, sobering look at my own family. And I see the women in my own family and I say, these motherfuckers were on some bullshit are on some bullshit and as far as i can tell they will continue to be on some bullshit and this bullshit is a problem i don't give a fuck about our blood relation you're on some bullshit you're on some shit that's going to uh negatively affect the collective later on down the line and a lot of people don't want to call this out and black women definitely don't want to call this out You know, y'all, y'all black women are, are, you know, blowing the horn and raising the banner and, 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 and beckoning for black men to go out here and be martyrs to build you a community and, and fight other groups of men and whatnot to go out and literally 
slay the dragon. While simultaneously, y'all don't want to be social martyrs. Because there are social implications. When you start calling out the bullshit, there are social ramifications that come with that. You start calling out some bullshit as a whole, and let's say a particular family member of yours fits that particular narrative of bullshit, you will get attacked. Not necessarily on a assault and physical assaulting basis, but they will come at you. And they will attempt to discredit you. But y'all don't want to be social martyrs to set the tone from a moral standpoint, but y'all expect us to be physical martyrs and put our lives on the line to establish um, the tangible standard and i say that's not uh -uh. that that's not gonna fly you know my my whole motto for 2007 with dealing with any and everybody is what's in it for me what's in it for me i hear you yeah 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 i hear you but what's in it for me i want to do it I want to do it, but I'm not going to drag somebody along kicking and screaming and who's going to actively, you know, drop their weight as much as possible while I'm carrying them to this particular destination and it's going to try to sabotage me the whole entire way. I'm not going to do it. I'm not. I'm only one man. As far as the, the 60s are concerned, you know, the black civil rights, black power movement going into the feminist movement, which I illustrated in my first response video to you that you were extremely off on your timeline and you completely left out the, the uh, feminist movement and a welfare um, movement that happened in the early 70s. You left that out and, and you took it out and then you put it in the 90s, which you know and I know is wrong. But anyway, like I said in my prior response video to you, Chrissy, that um, when we as a people came out of the civil rights era and the black power era and whatnot, Everybody was dog tired from the fight. It had been many a decades of, of you know, out, outwardly hostile racism and bigotry. You name it, water hoses, dogs, lynchings, and, and going back further in history, just the systematic extermination of our race. By the time, you know, civil rights was done, we were exhausted. And when feminism came into play, this is something you have to acknowledge. When feminism came into play, it was like the serpent in the Garden of Eden. They presented that fruit to our women. And the feminism and, and, and the feminists, you know, asked them the question, well, you won't surely die. You know, if you completely turn your back on your man and try to uh, usurp his agency by cutting out the middleman and using the state as your Excalibur weapon to bludgeon him into further and, and to further your personal agenda, you won't surely die. And as we've seen in the past, in, in that very same uh, Garden of Eden situation, that woman took that she she took that fruit and you need to acknowledge that you need to acknowledge hey there was a proposition in the 70s late 60s early 70s that was made to y'all as a collective and y'all took it i'm not blaming you for it because we were born around the same year i'm 
83 to 86, I'm in that same vein with you. So I was growing up around the same time, you know, observing the world around me as it was. We were around the same age when when we were growing up. So, you know, I can relate to you on you were here in 80, you know, mid 80s and you didn't create this. I'm not I'm not blaming you for the for the inception or the creation for this. I'm not blaming any of y'all. But at the same time, it comes a time when you need to say, hmm, you know, maybe it's not the best idea that we keep banging our head up against a brick wall. You know, I asked this gentleman one time, I said, why are you banging your head up against this brick wall? His reply was, because it hurts so good. Okay. Feminism came into play. Uh, equipped with welfare and state assistance and it completely toppled the nuclear family structure on top of the crack ep epidemic that hit in the 80s and then on top of that was the negative gangster um, promotion of our community as a whole now on top of all that what is the incentive to continue to defend this type of mindset and behavior and continuation of the promotion of it. What is the benefit? If you want us to deter deviant behavior from our Pacific segment of the demographic, which black men, you want us to assert ourselves, well, y'all educated black females need to assert yourselves within the sisterhood and redefine the standard of the sisterhood you know this is uh benjamin de souza au revoir